Hi everybody, um, we are going to start a new segment of videos called Let's Learn. Um, they're going to premiere every Sunday and we're going to learn how to do different things. Um, the first thing we're going to learn how to do is crib. So this is going to take a couple videos because while crib is a simple card game, uh, there are a lot of different things that can be talked about and we want to kind of keep the videos um, short and to the point so they're not boring. So uh, we're going to go over things like uh, shuffling because um, that's a good skill to have with any card game. And we're going to go over the basics and the rules and um, then maybe a bit of strategy and how luck plays into it, which will be um, a couple other videos. Uh, after that, we might learn how to play some other card games, or if there's anything that you guys want to learn how to do and you want me to show, I am up to learning how to do things as well, and I will do my best to showcase how I'm learning, and so maybe you can learn along with me. Um, so drop uh, any suggestions in the comments below uh, to let us know what you'd like to learn. Um, so, let's go over shuffling before we get into crib. So the typical, most typical way to shuffle is by going like this. So it's just like, and don't worry if you mess up because I continually draw cards all the time. I've been playing cards since I was six years old, maybe even younger. My family was very into cards. Um, and so they have taught me everything I know, uh, including shuffling. So to go over just like basics on how to do this, you're just going to pick up the deck with one hand and have the other hand ready to catch them. So like you're cradling with your fingers and you're going to just let some cards drop. So you're just going to loosen your grip and let like the first couple cards drop. And again, if they fall, no biggie. Um, that's where catching them comes in and doing it slowly, uh, you are more likely to drop more cards. So let's do it again. So you just, like sometimes I don't pick up all of the cards, so I let the first couple drop at the start, and then you just drop the first couple, then drop them, drop. Some people will even go in the back and drop some, and then go back in the front, and then in the back again. That can be a bit messier if uh, you don't always have a good grip on the cards. So you're just gonna drop a couple, and shuffling isn't a matter of like how many you drop or what you do. Um, it's just a way to kind of get the cards in a different order than they were before. With crib, it doesn't really matter what um, how much you shuffle because you're not using that many cards and they're typically going to be in a random order anyway. Um, but it's nice to kind of get a couple few and uh, to get the good cards on the surface. You don't know if that's going to happen, but whatever. And then a more advanced way of shuffling, which I myself learned about a year ago, is just uh, you, I don't put it down a little bit, you go like this, and then you go like this. So the second part is a part that took me four straight hours of learning how to do. Um, it wasn't easy. Uh, and especially because you have to bend the cards so much, it feels like you're going to hurt them. But the cards are pretty um, flexible and you're not going to hurt them. So um, let me show you how to do this one. So you're going to split the cards in half like that. doesn't matter how split they are. And then you're, this is how you're going to hold them in each hand. So this is how I do it. A couple people do it different ways. But basically you have your thumb on this side and then you have your middle finger on the other with your index finger curled over the top of them so you can bend them when it's time. You can use your other fingers to help you. Um, it's just going to like uh, let you bend them more. But then when you do it, they're going to stay in your hands and not go on the table. So it keeps them better. Uh, situated in your hands. So then you're going to bend them and you're going to let a couple of them go at a time from each hand. 
from each finger until all of them are gone and mixed in. And then you're going to pick them up with your thumbs on the top of them and the rest of your fingers around the bottom and you're going to bend them. And it's going to look like you're hurting them and you're bending them a lot, like you're using a bit of force, keeping the tops on and then you're going to let all of your fingers go. So that was a fast one. So we'll go back to that point again. So hold, and then you're slowly just going to let them un, uh, unbend. So you're just going to let a little bit of that pressure go so that they slowly come in. And your thumbs just kind of help them go form into the deck again. Uh, if you have any questions on that, or if I didn't explain something well enough, let me know, and I can uh, go over it again in the next video. So to play crib, you're going to need a crib board. So this is my crib board. Um, it looks like this. And the point is, is to get points all the way around until you hit this one up here. If you don't have a crib board, that's not a big deal. Um, you can do it without. You're scoring until uh, 121. So you can just keep score on paper uh, until someone gets to 121. Um, it is easier with a crib board to do that to score, um, but again, not a huge deal. So typically pegs are found in the bottom. And in crib, you can play with two people, so one person against the other. You can play with three people, so everyone's against each other, um, which is easier to play with a three-person crib board. Uh, a lot of them come in two, some of them come in three. And then you can also play with four, and you have partners. And so each person, um, each partner is scoring the same place. So games kind of go a little faster, um, and you have some help from another person. It's a good way to kind of have like a family game when you have that many people. So uh, the point of crib, um, so to start, the basics is each person um, if you're playing doubles, get six cards. So you deal out six cards to each person. To decide who deals at the start, because the dealer ends up getting um, a, kind, a bit of an advantage, typically you would, at the start of the game, before anything else happens, you and another person or your opponent would cut the deck. Um, so uh, this is the other person. And this is, uh, can be family rules, or um, I don't know what the official rule is, but it's gonna, you have gonna have to decide which one is, but if you have the low card or the highest card, again, you can decide which one. I, my family goes lower, and I know some people that go highest card, um, but when you decide, whoever gets the highest or lowest cards would then deal first. And so then they would deal, and you get um, four or six cards. Out of these six cards, two of those cards will go into another hand for the dealer. That's the advantage that the dealer gets. So uh, I'm just going to throw in random cards because we will talk about strategy later. But you would throw two cards in, the other players would throw two cards in, and then um, this hand stays over here until the play. So there's three stages that happen during every round. Um, and one is called the deal, which is what we just did. There's one more step to that, which I will explain now. So after you deal the cards and you throw two cards away, then you cut the deck again, and the dealer, the person who didn't deal cuts the deck, and then the dealer gets to flip up a card that then helps them during the show. So that is the last uh, part of the round. Um, next, we will go into the play. So the play happens when one person plays a card and then their opponent plays a card and they're trying to get um, points to 15 and 31 and you can't go past 31. So if you get to 15, so I play, I'll play i play 6 and then if my opponent plays a 9, they'll get to 15 and get 2 points. Um, the same as if then I play a 9 and they play another 6, that is 31, or a 9 and a 7 would be 31. Um, then... Uh, the person who plays the last card that gets to 31 would get the two points. If you can't get to 31, um, 
without going over, the last person to play a card uh, would then get one point. And that's called a go or a let or whatever else you want to call it. We, in my family, call it a go. Then um, the round starts over. So sometimes people will flip over the cards, some will push it to the side, but those cards now cannot be played again. And then you'd keep going um, and play until fifth or until 31 with trying to get to 15 first and then to 31. The other way to get points in the play is if uh, I play a four and my opponent plays a four, they get two points. And then if I play a four on top of that, I would get six points. So that's called the triple. And then uh, if they play another four by chance, it's not very common, they would then get 12 points for playing uh, four fours in a row and being the last person to play a four. Uh, another way to get points during the play is to um, play runs. So if I play a four and my opponent plays a five and then I play a six, I would get three points plus two for getting the 15. So if you get multiples of different types of points, you then add up those multiples um, together. So you would get all the points of all the things that you did. So an easier example would be if I play a one, my opponent plays a two, and then I play a three, I would get three points. But then if my opponent plays a four, they would get four points, and then so on if I played a five, up until you can't play up any more cards. It doesn't usually go past five or six. Um, however, uh, as long as it's under 31, you can go as high as you can go. Um, and that's uh, all the ways to get points during the play. Um, then becomes the show. So then you would pick up your cards and place them down and count your points. The way to get points in your hand is almost the same as the play. Um, you want to get runs, you want to have pairs, and you want to make 15s. Unfortunately, 31 doesn't add up in your hand, and that's just during the play. So if I have a 10 and a 5, uh, I would get 15 points, but we will go over all the different variations of all of the points in the next video. So, uh, yeah, that is the way you would count up your points, you would count the points um, with your pegs, just as you did during the show or the play. So every time you get points in the play, you like peg them and then you peg them again um, during the show. And so the person who doesn't deal goes first because they don't have the advantage of having the second hand. So once they show, then you show, you count your points, and then you look into your kitty and see what you have there. I call it a kitty. It's called the crib or another hand, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it the kitty during this um, these videos. And then you would count your points in this. Um, and then once that's done, you put all the cards back onto the deck, and then the next person deals the cards. Uh, and you go until you hit 121. So that is the basics of crib. Um, we will go over different types of hands in the next game or in the next video. And then we will talk about strategy, how luck plays into it, and anything that I might have missed during the rules of this video. I hope you enjoy it. And again, if you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks.